subscribe to the Danny Houston podcast, man. Man, yes, talk about uh because <clears throat> like you said, I mean, you had this this run where you were going and you just kind of felt like it was stagnant. Like this is after you have all these club records. Like what what point were you when you was like, man, I got to make a move, man? 2013, 2013, um, that was one of the worst years in my career. Um, around that time, everyone's used to me now. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had been around about three or four years around that time, and one of my biggest songs to date is Throw That Ass. But that was the year it came out. And when it came out that year, it was nowhere as big as it is today. Today it's a club classic, mm -hmm. but back then, in 2013, I'm the rapper that's been out about three or four years. You're used to me. Uh, all I know is that that was the first single I've ever had where I'm cussing too much in the hook. So now the radio can't play it. I'm not getting spins like that. You know what I'm saying? My shows are going down because of that. So I'm not getting booked like that. And it hit me, I'm like, man, I gotta get the fuck out of Texas. I've done everything I can do here. I've hit that glass ceiling, I gotta move around. So I almost moved, you know, to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Stopped paying on the house I had. And I was leasing at the time. Me, my baby mama, my kids, and we was finna just move to Atlanta. And um, it hit me, I was like, everybody be dick riding Atlanta, man. And I don't mean that disrespectful way. I love Atlanta because Atlanta love me. <laughs> Shit. You know, but I was like, I'm an H-Town nigga with my rap partners from out of town, a football player partners, a basketball player partners. When they come to Houston, they want me to take them everywhere. Like, I'm a Houston flag waver. What good am I to my city in Atlanta? So after, after, I, had, after I had that epiphany, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to stay. I'm not going to move. But I had already stopped paying on my house. You know what I'm saying? So now me and my kids, baby, my we ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> so I'm like, well, shit. Got to call my mama. This when she was still alive, you know what I'm saying? Called her up. I said, hey, man, you know, I need to come stay at your house. Well, it was like that. You went back to the crib. Yeah, I had to go stay with my mama for like about three months so I can go house searching and look for another house and, you know, get everything back together. And, um, and all this was happening in 2013. It was just a humbling experience because when you back at home with your mama, she don't give a fuck about none of that club guard shit. She like, wash the dishes. I'm like, <laughs> what? And I was just on Billboard charts last year. What are you talking about? No, um, independent, uh, independently number uh, 97 on the uh, urban hip hop R&B charts. You ain't about that. Like, I'm not finna wash no dishes. She's like, I don't give a fuck. It's like, bet, um, it's, it's just some soap over there. Right. <laughs> you know, so I was sleeping on an air mattress at my mama's house, all that. And um, when I got my new house, you know what I'm saying, it just um, moved out of there. And I just w wanted to make sure I never had another 2013 again. You know what I'm saying? So pretty much, you know, like you were saying with, the, with that stagnant shit, that was around the time where I felt I had to leave. I had to do something different. You know what I'm saying? So after that, that's when I went mixtape crazy. I was like, all right, well, people are not going to make club hits. Let me go more albumish and let them know that I can rap, too. So I would mix the albums now. Now half the album is club, the other half is rapping. And when I did that, I started getting blog attention. Hot new hip-hop and complex and, you know what I'm saying, uh, hip-hop DX and... A lot of these writers I'm still cool with to this day. You know what I'm saying? I started getting blog attention when I started spitting. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right. They posted me on blogs now on Twitter and shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I met Nancy Byron. You know, yeah. she was my first, you know, OG. OG publicist. Yeah. Her and them whole ass fucking cats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's my nigga though, man. Nancy, man. You know, she uh, taught me the whole, you know, um, publication game. Because prior to that, yeah. you still were able to create these buzzes just off natural yeah, word yeah, of mouth. Yeah, did. yeah, yeah. Because um, also, I'm realizing that, all right, well, I'm a character. People think I'm fucking funny. So if I don't have a single that's popping, 
Let me look around on the internet and see if anybody did some bullshit. I'm going to make a song about it. <laughs> I remember that era. So I'm like, if I ain't got a single, if I got a single, I'm, I'm not going to do it because I'm too busy. But if I don't have a single and you do some bullshit, I'll get uppercutted by a bus driver <laughs> or your name is Sharkeisha or <laughs> P.O.P. Hold It Down or anything. I'm on your ass. You know what I'm saying? And I would do freestyles, just funny freestyles, and they would be so big. Hell, they would be bigger than my singles sometimes. And uh, they would get so big, so many hits. I never really liked SoundCloud. I was always an audio Mac person. It would get so many hits on Audio Mac. Me and Audio Mac developed a relationship, and then these freestyles, they all started going to World Star. Hmm. So every time I would drop one, it'd go to World Star to the point where me and Q got cool at World Star. He like, nigga, you were funny as fuck. And then when he passed away, it hurt me. I was like, dang, that was a real nigga. Because everything I was doing, he was putting it up, and then it just stopped. You know what I'm saying? I stopped getting that World Star love like I was doing. But my thing is with that, I ushered in a whole other form of hip hop because I was doing funny freestyles about stuff before Instagram. People like, um, Sway the Remix God. He told me, he said, nigga, I was in high school listening to those. Every time you did one of the no motherfucking hoes was funny as hell to me. That's why he started doing what he does. The other guy, um, Marquis, the guy that made the. Never would have made, never, mm -hmm. never, never. He'd tell me, like, you the GOAT. You started that. He's like, I was listening to that shit in New York. That's why I do what I do. It's so crazy it's like, the things that you that, that people pick up on. It's like, you done did all this other shit, and then I get on the gram, and I'm just commentating. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is what y'all fucking So with. I ushered in a whole different sound of hip hop but because I wasn't at the level I'm at today back then nobody cares you know I say that all the time man if if you talking shit on the internet and you have a popping single it's gold everyone loves everything you're saying but if you're talking shit on the internet and you're not popping it sounds like complaining if you're not popping is complaining but if you are popping everybody like yeah man he's spitting some real shit you know what I'm saying this is all about your level of status where you are you know what I'm saying because if you up there you know people are going to you know, receive things more you're going to get more praise you're going to get your flowers you know what I'm saying but if you underground people don't want to give you your flowers and I'm at the point now man I just take my flowers man because shit people going to play with you man if you don't just Get out there and be like, nah, nigga, I start this. Hmm. I did this shit, they're gonna play with you. And Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.